it's important to just leave them with that sense that they can always approach you with anything, whether it's something that they've heard, that they've seen, um, they're not necessarily going to be reprimanded, uh, but it's an opportunity for you to teach um, and for them to learn. Ooh, all this um, talking to the kids and saying exactly what it is. Um, I'm sure I'll get, I'll do it when I have to, when I get there, I'll do it. I'll use myself as an example in this. I, I got the talk from my dad because my mom wasn't there. And I don't know who was more embarrassed. Maybe it was him or maybe it was me. <laughs> if you're from Nigeria, you know what I'm talking about. So I spent the, uh, maybe five minutes of, the talk was like five minutes looking at the ground. And he also was looking anywhere but at me. But um, he was, and I don't know how he did it. He was, he was very straightforward about it. Like he didn't say, this is the PP and this is the uh uh. He just said to me, and this was when my period started. And I'm hoping I'll be able to do that without um, finding somewhere to hide my face when it's my child's turn. He said to me, this is a, uh, you know, men. Obviously, you know men and you know women. Men have this. And he told me the name in my language. Oh my word, where are my Yoruba uh, sisters here? I nearly died because <laughs> I wasn't one expecting this lecture. He told me, this is what it is. And then the woman also are different. And you know what you have? I think that one, he also couldn't say it. You know what you have? Now, when this goes inside this, you're going to get pregnant. There was no ABC. <laughs> you're going to get pregnant. And when you get pregnant, you go to the village and stay with your grandmother. End of conversation. That was the beginning and end of my sex education. Uh, I hope I won't be that short. But what I'm saying is, are we comfortable enough to say that to our kids? Because there's a lot of um, words that are used. We, we, the days of the birds and the bees are gone. There's nobody who can use that anymore, unless you're just, you know, fooling yourself. Those are, those days are gone. But I worry about. Um, not just the trends, but the sex education that they're insisting on in South Africa now for them to do in school. And really just how far is it going to go? Like um, my friend Nika was saying now, she brought out a condom and all of that, but that's within the house. You know, you can actually control the conversation, you know, where it's going to go. You know your son and all of that. But I, I don't know what they're going to say to them in school. And I've already said nobody should teach my child, you know. I'll do it myself in my house. I don't want her in that class. But how are you going to handle it? Those of us, Auntie Yvonne, your son is older than mine. Auntie Isabel, who else is here? Are you going to? Yes, that's why we're having this conversation. What are we going to do? Are we going to send him to Pastor Kemi's house? <laughs> <laughs> no, I also just want to ask because, okay, for like mothers who say, okay, kids who come back and say, Mommy, I already know because I know sometimes, okay, with the boys I've seen, when they start getting to a certain age, they become a bit withdrawn in the sense that, you know, it's, we don't have very long chats with mommy as I used to have. So, okay, well, I'm at that age where he tells me everything. I mean, my son is at that age where he tells me everything, but I've seen with my cousins and everything, the moment they start reaching a certain age, now they're too cool to have, you know, those conversations. So it's always like trying to hide that. Okay, I already know, I already know. Are you going to ask, what do you know? You know, and if you know, you know, okay, what, what, what is your take about it? You know, I just want to know, because again, you don't want to probe too much in the sense that you, I don't want to seem like the strict mom if I am to really have that conversation. But now also in the day and age we're living in, back then, Valentine's was just a day for old lovers, but now Valentine's kids are so prepared for Valentine's, you know, and uh, young kids, my son is like nine and not that he had a Valentine's date, but someone asked him who his date was. And he said, you know, mommy, do I really need to have a date for Valentine's? Why are people are saying that they've got a date and, you know, and I said, but the date, a, a date for what? You know, so that's my... I, okay, well, I couldn't do the question was just mm -hmm. how do we ask our boy children for mothers with boys to say, okay, if they've told us that they know it all, what do they know? You know, without seeming like you're very harsh or, you know, that, that, that kind of, uh, that type of thing. 
Okay, I see two hands up. Um, Pastor, uh, uh, who is it? Tony and um, Tony. And Pastor Kemi wanted to say something when I said we'll send the children to our house. We're ready to hear you, Pastor Kemi. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, don't send them to my house. <laughs> don't send them, I'll send them back home to you. <laughs> okay, um, I think Tony put up her hand first. Oh, no, that was from the last okay. time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Tony, you want to say something? Okay, yeah. I'm just going to respond um, to what you said about school. Mm -hmm. That is not from somewhere. Uh, can we all mute? Okay. Okay, go on, Tony. You must send this for your cookie, no? Sorry? It's okay, go on. <laughs> okay, so you can't avoid it. So the best bet is that you do it before they get to hear it in school. That's why it's important that you have that conversation at home. So they have that foundation. So whatever they're hearing in school, then you've countered it with a solid foundation with a solid information that okay, this is yes you say we don't talk about birds and bees anymore but okay this is what it is so you need to give them that they're exposed to so much information some of it are not right in school it's very important that we start it early enough and with regards to boys yeah they get to that stage they just don't talk any little thing they go into their rooms is like they're constantly angry and they just don't want to have that conversation with you but you cannot give up you have to persevere you have to continue knocking at the door you have to continue giving them that opportunity to talk to you and funny enough as they grow older what i found with my boy is that as they grow older you become their friend. My older boy, the 22-year-old, he comes to me now with things sometimes that, oh, but I don't say that and I don't let him see that. But sometimes he's like, oh boy, just deal with it, you know. <laughs> but everything, he comes to me now. But there was a time he wasn't talking to me. He just could not be bothered to talk to me. It was such an effort. So you just have to continue. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. I read um, there are three researches that have been done from 2020, 2012 and another one actually in April of this year that shows that when children, and this I think where the study was really about girls, when they are exposed to sexual images, so it can be photos, it can be something they're watching, their body actually begins to respond quite quicker. So they get into puberty before the world because of what they've been exposed to. And um, I, 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 and I think, okay, so maybe this is why they're, we're having nine-year-olds. I'm not saying all the nine-year-olds that are having their period because nine-year-olds are having periods now. Nine, ten are starting their period, you know? Um, in my daughter's school, there are two of them, you, which uh, is, um, anyway, so why, how do we keep our kids from not watching the things we don't want them to watch? Like I started with that video. I said, um, you know, when I tell her to cover her eyes, is that, you know, I know what they're doing if my eyes are covered, which means she's probably seen it at other times. People, and it wasn't like anything bad. It was just um, a kissing scene. She's seen it at other times, but it would probably be when I'm not there. But how do you keep your child, just like Pastor says to us adults, you know, our mind, we have to keep our keep what comes into us, you know, in our eyes. But how do you keep your child? Especially now when almost all of them have got phones. They can send images to each other. They can when you're not there. When you're there, they are good. But what happens when you're not there? So what do you do? This is to every mom. Every mom. Every mom that is here. Okay. Uh Cassie, your kid is still very small, eh? <laughs> so let's not use you. Sorry, we're going through the same mom because you know you've had this experience. We are just getting there. 
So we're going to moms with older kids again. Uh, who do I call now? Pastor Kami, I have to call you again. <laughs> uh, and how, how do you control um, the kids not watching? And for those who don't know, she's got a boy, she's got a girl. How do you monitor what they're watching or what they're listening to? Well, with regards to Jason, Jason is 15. Uh, we've got passwords to his phone and we just randomly do checks. <laughs> on his phones to see what kind of WhatsApp conversations he's having with his friends, um, what websites he's going to on the internet. And if he sees something that we're not comfortable with, we actually sit him down. His dad is quite good with that. Thank God that, you know, he's his dad. So we should send the children to your house. Most, then to the pastor team. <laughs> he does most of the talking to Jason, you know, and just, I mean, just reiterate, I guess it's, it's, it's teaching them values teaching them what is right, what is wrong, and reinforcing those values every time you have conversations with them and saying, as a child of God, this is not the right thing to do. This is not what you should be watching. This is not what you should be listening to. And, and tell them why, you know, and just have open conversations with them about what is wrong, what is right, and the effects of those things upon them, on them, you know, effects of watching pornographic things or watching sexual videos or listening to rap music where they're constantly swearing the whole time, you know. So just having those open conversations with him regarding that and then there was a time when our dstv we used to put like um like a password so anything over the age of i think it was 13 then we, well, he's 15 now but then it was i think 13 they couldn't watch it you know and mm -hmm. he's, he's learned now and when he sees movies that are not as 16 and above he doesn't even go there or he asks us can i watch this you know he's he's quite responsible that way in terms of asking us can i watch this can i not watch this and yeah, and with Jade as well, we try and do the same as well. So it's just, um, uh, yeah, just monitoring what they watch. Just telling them, yes, you're still under my roof, so I should. Ha I have access to your phones, I have <laughs> access to your iPads, and I can check <laughs> what you're watching. And if you're not happy with it, then I take back the device because we bought it for you anyway. <laughs> not that we don't say that harshly, but you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the implication. But it's just you know, just doing spot checks, but don't, not. Not, not micromanaging them or always being in their space or in their face. Like I want to see what you're watching, who you're chatting to. You know, it's just random checks that we do now and again to see who, who what, what kind of conversation they're having on WhatsApp. And sometimes you see stuff and you're like, you know, what's going on here? Because it's in all sorts of groups. You know, they form groups. These teenagers, they're forever in some <laughs> funny group. So it's monitoring those groups and the kind of conversations <laughs> that go on there and seeing what they also contribute to those conversations. Because sometimes they may be saying nonsense, but he's quiet. He doesn't say anything on those groups, you know. So it's just basically uh, being open with the kids and making them feel free to talk to you about anything. I think that's most that's what we want to build with our kids, that, that open relationship where they don't feel like they can hide things from us, but they are open to come and tell us what's happening in their lives. And yeah, they, they're pretty open to tell us what, what's going on. And we also, we monitor, it's a conscious decision. You have to con constantly be checking what they're listening to, what they're watching, and who's speaking to them, who's speaking, who, who their friends are, what kind of friends they have. And yeah, and just reinforcing the values that you want them to have. Okay, Mike. okay, okay. I find that um, a number of parents are weary about um and i think I, okay let me just say they're wary about um invading their pri the privacy of their children <laughs> invading the privacy of their children so they will not check the phone they will not check um messages i'm with um my friend doing here i'm your mom i'm not your friend eh? i'm your mom i'm not your friend you know if that person's mm. mom is to want to change moms i haven't had a yes yet <laughs> if she wants to change moms <laughs> But um, I find, um, and then the older they get, and uh, like I said to, uh, for like, oh, this is a, all oh, this is a TV thing. You slam the door when I talk to you. It happened once. After I finished laughing, I said, lie, 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 ever, ever. Hey, even if it occurs in your brain that I'm talking to you, I know you go and slam the door. Hey, you will see the Niger mom that I am. Eh? But what do you do when your kids, <laughs> instead of you're laughing? Ah, uh, yeah, she can't be slamming the door in my house. Uh, uh that's rude. That's all this um, TV story, you know. It's a TV, and it's a white thing. How many black children do you see going and slamming the door on their parents? Your parents is talking, and you walking away. Hey, 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 hey. 
See, if you want laughing, where we come from, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so, how do you monitor those of you who have teenagers? <laughs> how do you monitor? Um, how, you know, the pastor me said what they do, but what what do you do with the phones? Your kids have phones. You have teenagers in the house. Zach, what do you do? Okay. Um, I think I I agree with with Pastor Kelly that my son knows I can access his phone at any time. He tries to say, "Oh, but what about my privacy and whatever?" But he knows that we can we can check his phone. What I've done with the twins, um, with their tablets, whatever they download, I have to approve it. It it registers on my phone, and then. I need to put in my password to allow it to download. So even if it's games or anything that they try to download, I, I already know what it is and I need to approve it first. As well as um, YouTube. They don't have access to the normal YouTube. They only have access to YouTube kids, which frustrates them because there are certain things they can't access, but it's just too bad. If they want it uh, for a normal YouTube, they have to use one of my devices. And I know what it is, so I, I monitor everything. So that's what I do. Do they have the phone twenty four seven, or do you take it at any time? So the twins don't have phones. Um, they only have tablets, which they use for school. Um, and then Emu has his phone twenty four seven, but I have access to it at any time if I need to. If you need to, okay. Anyone want to contribute to this before we go on? And I can see the time is actually moving quite fast. Yeah, someone just said, yeah, the new um, <coughs> um, the new age that children talk back to 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 their kids. Uh, it, it it's very it's very different now. Um, about two years ago, when I was still teaching, I went I dropped this. I used to do car lift, and the boy that I dropped, I said, oh, you've got a new car in the house. He said, yes, my parents bought it for my brother. I said, wow, because I knew they had been going through some rough parties, but he turned 18 or something, so maybe they promised him. And you know what he said? This was, uh, it was eight then. He said, I'm very surprised too, because he backchats my parents. Because, so if an eight-year-old can see the behavior of the older one, and then he's seeing that uh, even with that, with that behavior, he's still getting um, rewarded. No, I don't care whether it's your birthday or not. But he actually he said, I'm so surprised to Auntie Temi. He backchat my parents. I don't know. You know? So the thing, the same thing with the things that we give them. Is it, oh yeah, I'm giving it to you and that's it. It's yours. Okay, so I see we're all African African mothers here. Right? We haven't westernized. We haven't westernized our brain <laughs> when the children are concerned. <laughs> okay. Um <clears throat> I'd said this will not just to just be one hour. So um the last thing that I would like to say, and if anybody else wants to contribute, please just put your hand up or something because I can't see all the screen at the certain time. It's um, we need to observe our children, like what happened with um, or what is um, Isabel noticed. We need to observe one with all we all the older, uh, moms with older kids have said as well. You all know your kids. You can tell if a child becomes withdrawn for no reason. Then um, you need to, if you can't talk, if you have a boy, I don't know what to, I don't know. I don't even know what I will do. Okay, I'll send him to pastor's house. But what do you do? <laughs> You're laughing, you gone. You have to have that conversation soon. You have to. I, actually, for the girls, it said that you should have the conversation about their period before they actually start a period. So that it doesn't be, it's not um, frightening for the child when they see that. I had a friend who said she used penicillin for two days on herself. This is all this is all women, so I can say it. she used penicillin on herself for two days because she didn't know why she was why there was blood, and then she thought it was because she was standing next to a boy somewhere, and this was you know she didn't even know whether that means she was pregnant, but the mom just somehow found out what was going on and had to have that conversation. But that was the period that already started, but uh, we need to have that conversation before. It starts. I probably will have this conversation next year because I'm already being asked what is um, a panty liner for, you know? So I'm probably going to have this conversation sooner than I want to, but that's okay. I'll just see what it is. But um, 
to observe your child. What if you, if you begin to see, like um, Isabel noticed, and that mom didn't actually see what was going on. Yeah, that mom. Thanks, Nika. That mom didn't see what was going on at the. I don't know if it's over familiarity or the wanting to be close to this person who is not family or anything. Even family, we need to let kids know. And this is this. Um, it can. It doesn't have to be. I mean, with what Isabel. Um, so made me realize I need to let Falakemi know it doesn't have to be just adults, even um, your your own age group. People like in school, and that has happened once or twice in their school, where some boy pulled out his pants. I wanted them to see, you know. So it said, "Well, okay, let me see the color. Uh, let me see. I have new panties." And then someone decided, "Let me even just take off. Let me just pull down the pants, you know." And that's how it will start. Okay, I've shown you mine, so show me yours. So we need to observe if that happens with our kids. I remember those um, that child that was raped in R.I. Griffith um, was last year or two years ago. It was an eight-year-old girl. It was in the papers and um, three boys, three, I think, grade, grade six kids or something, raped this child. And the way they went about it, one of them, I'm saying this story for my friends in the UK and America. One of them actually waited in the bathroom and then another one went to call. And two of them waited in the bathroom and another one went and said, so, so, and so is calling you. So they, they used a familiar person to say, oh, this person is calling you, knowing that she will follow because it was that person. And then she got there and three of them raped this girl. She didn't know what had happened. She, she had, I guess she had no words for what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> and she has no, she had no words for what has happened. So even when, even when she was picked up from home, I mean, from school, she could not say, this is what happened. But the mom or whoever it is observed that there was something wrong. And that's how they were able to like, oh my word. Anyway, it came out. But can you imagine if kids, not just kids in, primary school being raped, but they're being raped by kids in primary school as well. So we need to observe our children and we also need to um, not just watch what they're doing, but what they're saying. What they're saying. This was brought to my attention this afternoon. If your child asks you, for example, what is penetration? That conversation is not just overdue, it is not risky. Because we're <laughs> you're laughing. If your nine year old uh, if your nine year old comes and says, What is penetration? What are you gonna do? It is not uh, if it's a boy, you're already afraid. But if it's a girl and a girl says, What does it mean if somebody's penetrated? Uh, yeah, that's what it would be. Silence. Silence in court. You because, answer. Yes, you, you answer. answer. But, yes, but first your head, your your brain. Has gone hey all the way to put you in jail and back again, like yo. Now I hope I hope I don't hear that question. But you know, just the, the the that's what um moms are saying here. Just the look on your face, the child can know whether to say something or not say it. You know, they can just say it's not important. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when a child uses that word penetration, okay, um you will have to explain it. But you also need to find out where is that question coming from? Where is that word coming from? Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Where is that word coming from? When I was teaching, there were two cousins in the school. One well, I think was in grade five. And then I had this child like pre-primary. And she wasn't telling us. She was saying to other friends that this cousin, both of them girls, will, when she goes to their house, because they go home together, she stays till her parents come is practicing kissing on her. She says she's practicing. And that if she tells anybody, she will use her mom's high heels to beat her. And the heels are like this, I know the bomb. So she didn't tell her parents. She didn't tell anyone, but she, you know, they were having, you know, girls just just thought. And the minute we said, oh, what happened? She just calmed down. She, she, she just stopped talking. We spoke to the mom. The mom was afraid. I don't know if she did anything to say anything. Because that cousin is on the father's side. And she didn't want to cause problems in the family. 
Till I left that school, that child was still going on with his cousins. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So it's who, who the, this goes back to the acceptable touch and inappropriate touch. Who is allowed to touch you? With, you don't think a girl cousin is going to do that? Eh? <laughs> you don't think a girl cousin is going to do that? And I, I don't know. I don't know where it ended. I don't know where it ended. But if your eight year old says to you, what is penetration? And you can please explain it to us. How do we say it? How do we explain this? Well, um, I think you explained that um, for sex to happen, the male penis has to come inside the female vagina. And you talk about the different holes that they have because, you know, um, there are different holes. And you say penetration is when something happens in this particular hole. And the eyes will go like this. Yeah, I can see my eyes as well. Are there things that go there? (laughs) (laughs) Because we've already had this conversation about the different holes. And so that big big baby is going to come out from inside of me. But yes, yeah, yes, yeah, and 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 this is where again, you know, it's very important the demeanor that you have, so that they can be able to come back to you, you know, Mm. because if you freak out, uh, then they will know that no, uh, for those kind of questions, we don't go to her. Um, so you (laughs) want to keep that that flow of information as open as possible. Go and freak out with your friends later and say, oh, oh my word, this is what happened. But mm-hmm. when you speak to them, you know, you try and get as much composure and keep it as casual as possible. And, and, and you know, um, someone mentioned um, also something about respect. Because a yeah. lot of, mm-hmm. um, you know, what the images that children see around sex, um, maybe will be porn, maybe will be things that are extreme. Um, things that are not, um, you know, nice and proper, respectable relations between two people. It's just vulgar. Um, so, you know, you need to really help them to differentiate between and, and, and really get them to understand that this is a good thing. It's a good thing, but it's, it, it's a good thing for people that are, that are at a particular stage because you also then want to get them. And when they get to that stage, to want it, you know, so, so we, we, we don't want to make it so taboo that, uh, now when they do get married and they do need to have sexual relations with their spouses, they are actually unable to because it has actually been drummed up in them how bad it is, how wrong it is, how they should stay away from it and so on. So, you know, you, you, you have to work with those, with those nuances. Hmm. Oh man, these children don't come with um. They don't come with uh. <laughs> with um. What is it called now? How to how to how to book? You know manuals. Yeah, okay, instruction manuals. They, they, <laughs> they don't come with instruction manuals. They don't. So we need to um. We need to have that conversation. We need to try and be open as possible. I know in church we try to do this. Those of you who don't come to City of Zion, hey, you're missing it. So. We need, we try to do this with the kids. Um, and from last year, or yeah, last year now, we've included the younger ones to, to have, yeah, that's why we had to have this conversation. <laughs> we've included the younger ones before we were keeping it to the teens, but you find that more and more of these kids, are, um, they're just aware, you know, they're just aware. One of the parents here, I'm not going to say who it is, and if she wants to say that, that's fine. Um, Actually, asked uh, a son asked her what what what's going on when he goes into the bathroom in the morning and he's hard. What's going? I said ah, you have to send him to the daddy. Just you know. <laughs> I don't know what Yvonne will do with that. But hell, what do you ask that for? I don't have that. You know that um, <laughs> that problem. My child is a girl. Uh, she wouldn't. But how do you ask that? Huh? I mean, how do you answer? Not you. How do you answer? Um, Okay, you also don't have a boy, and Tony, you can't answer. I don't. I, I think I was okay. We run away from that question. Uh, Zach, did you ever get that kind of question? No. Uh, no, and I mean, that was the dad. The dad handled that, so mm-hmm. I think I was sorted. 
Okay, ladies, um, <laughs> thank you for, yes, it's exactly one, one hour now, or a little bit over one hour. Yvonne, I hope you took notes. Did you take notes? <laughs> and this several, did you take notes? Those of us, we know ourselves, eh? Did you take notes? Huh? Auntie Tammy, can uh, I just say something? There yes, are yes, some yes. also materials online, you know, and even videos on YouTube on how to have the conversation with your kids. You know, you can put what age group your child is in and how to have, you know, approach, talk about sex to children within a specific age group. So if you're not sure how to do it, then go online. There are materials out there. So for those that are single moms, they know that to talk to their boys about sex or, you know, and you have to have those conversations with a boy child or even girl child as well. Um, there are videos online. There are materials that we can use and that gives us, you know, how to start, start that conversation with our children, you know, and talk to them about sex and, you know, yeah, all those issues, periods and puberty, things, those hard conversations that our parents never had with us. And so we have to have it. <laughs> I like that. that I remember when I started my period. Yes. My, my mother, my auntie was on like, can they kill the chicken for me for starting my period? And my auntie came and I had, like, you had a two-minute conversation. Okay, you're a girl now, you're a woman now. If a boy touches you, you're going to fall pregnant. Don't let any boy touch you. Finish, you know. And from that day, I was just afraid of sex. I was afraid that once somebody touches me, I'm going to fall pregnant, you know. So we mustn't do that disservice to our children. We must teach them properly. <laughs> and not, like Kuni said, not make sex seem like something that is dirty or something that is, that is a taboo. So that when they get married, you don't struggle. Because a lot of Christian, you know, girls, especially when they get married, because they've been told, you know, that sex is such a bad thing, such a dirty thing, and they struggle sexually when they get married, and they're not able to enjoy sex in marriage, you know. So we must have this conversation with our children from when they are young, so that we don't scar them for life when they grow older. But yeah, that's one of the things I said, and like I said, half of you have not watched this. You haven't watched that video, hey? I don't want my, I didn't want, yes. So I'm going to give you the channel, um, what's it called now? So you know where to go. I'll go and look at it and just subscribe. I don't want my child. Also, one of the things that I didn't want, but I, um, I don't want, not didn't. I don't want, I don't want my child to grow up with the wrong impression about sex. I don't want us to then need therapy, you know, after she gets married and then we're running around, um, you know, for this and that. So we have to find a balance on how to say it, what to say. Um, I, somebody said, um, uh, added that, um, as, oh, I think it was funny, as they grow older, you add more information. And I really, really have found that, with, especially with young children, if um, you say, um, what is this? And you just say what it is, and that's the end of it. I mean, my child is wearing my bra all over the house and thinking, wow, this is like, yeah, what is the word? Ginormous. You know, but then by the next week, she wants to know when she's going to wear a bra. And you know, my child, I don't know what she wants to wear the bra for, but I know where that is coming from. Somebody is wearing bra top and they wear, I said, there's nothing. What are we going to put in it? You know, they don't make the size for like this. And when we're having the conversation about um, panty liners, it's all the same thing. So I'm saying you need to wait, you know, you can wait, you know, you can wait just like the makeup. You wait until the certain day you, you have the makeup. But let's not, like Pastor Kemi said, let's not do a disservice to our kids by um, making them afraid of sex. You all mom is here now, so you know that it's not bad. So by, by not, um, try not to make them afraid of sex, but at the same time, yeah, Nick, I see your hand, but at the same time, to give just the information that they need. And from what I'm hearing, we just need to be open with our kids so they can come to us and know it doesn't matter what it is. I can talk to my mom about it. Okay, so I'm just going to let Nikkei talk and then we're going to end this. Okay, go Nikkei. Your mic is okay. <laughs> um, this is going to take a minute. I thought I should share this with you all. Um, in as much as we want to have the talk, we want to encourage the free um, discussion. Um, the question when you raise um, about penetration, that if someone or any child should come to you with a very, you know, kind of, oh, this kind of a question that you really was you're freaking out inside. I really want to point it out that, and this is from an experience that happened like way back that ended up with the family really in a very bad situation. Because when they, 
provided the talk to the teenager at that point, a young teenager, right? She did not come out and say, oh, this happened to me or something like that. So she internalized it because they were talking about what this means, what, you know, what is supposed to happen when you're older, this is so good and all that. Not knowing that this young child had already been sexually kind of, you know, introduced in that way. So she kind of internalized it without being able to talk about, oh my God, this has really happened to me. And uh, about maybe a couple of months down, she actually wanted to commit suicide, but um, to the glory of God, you know, that, you know, she was, it turned out, everything turned out right. But I just wanted to point it out that we should always remember, especially our young um, adult, um, young teenagers, that when we listen, we should also try to, to kind of um, come back with, well, it, you know, it's really not the end of the world, but this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way we you know, the value and this and that. But if it happens, you, you know, that, just to kind of bring a balance so that th those young child would not go on thinking they've committed the worst crime in the world. And at that age, sometimes it's very difficult if they can't come out and talk about it and get the right counseling. Just wanted to point that out. Okay. Thank you. Oof. Oh, it's been, it's been an interesting one hour.